In this video, we're going to take a look at the custom filter in Photoshop and talk a bit about how you can use it and what it's really there for. Um, I'm also going to show you a couple of examples on how you can use it and uh, just explain a bit of the technical things for it. Now, this video is not going to be scripted as most of my other videos are, so I might go a bit off track. So please forgive me for that. So the custom filter can be found up under filter, other and custom. Now the custom filter is used for many different things and it actually drives most of the other filters in your filters tab as well in Photoshop. So for example, if you want to blur your image or make, maybe make it sharper, the custom filter is one way of doing it. And you also have predefined filters in Photoshop such as blur or Gaussian blur. And those filters are actually built using the custom filter or the mathematical methods for doing that. So, Essentially what this filter here is for is for you to enter numbers into here that will then determine how pixels will be rendered on the screen and then how that will change the look of the image, essentially. So um, if you want to read a bit more about the mathematical side behind all this, uh, you would look up convolution, as it's called, um, and also something called kernel. So the method for this is called convolutions and that's the way of how it looks up the pixels and determines how the pixels should be handled. And the kernel or the kernel num uh, numbers or values are the values we enter into this matrix right here that will determine how the convolution will detect the pixels and mathematically um, calculate if it should be sharpening the image or maybe make it blurrier and such. Uh, to give you an example now, there is actually one way or actually three ways to find the edge around our Photoshop documents of specific things in the scene. So maybe you can, maybe we want to find the edge around everything in our document. So maybe get a sharper line all around the polar bears here in our scene and, and the corners and everything. Uh, so to show you how you can do that, um, I know this mathematical kernel numbers for this already because I've been doing this quite some time. Um, so the, the mathematical or the, the values for the kernel numbers numbers are um, 1, 1, 1, 1, and minus 4. And now you can see we have a an edge all around our polar bears and the water and the and and the thing uh, that they're standing on on the ice. So that's one way of doing it. And let me go back here again, open the custom filter. And if you see now, if we change this number here to, for example, three, we get a totally different look. It looks a bit blur blurred right now. So the numbers you enter in here are going to be changing the image rather drastically. Uh, another way just to show you uh, how you can do this uh, is maybe you can do, uh, yeah, we can do this way. So minus one, one, nothing, nothing, um, one and minus one. That will also give me this sort of filter right here. If we do minus one all around like this and put an eight into here, that will also give me this effect of sharpening the edges or just showing the edges right over here. Uh, so you might wonder now, well, okay, how would I know what to enter into this thing? I have no idea what, what really to use it for yet and why do I really care about it? So. If you go into um, to Wikipedia, you can search for kernel image processing, and this will actually show you a couple of examples, um, both mathematically and also um, the way of how you would enter these numbers to get different results. Uh, these are just some of the examples of how you can get, as it says right here, a few examples of effects you can achieve by convoluting kernels and images. So that's essentially the, the, the idea of how to use the kernels, um, convolution and the custom filter into Photoshop. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you got at least an understanding of how it's used. Yeah, I hope you have a good day and uh, thank you for watching.